Thank you, Nate. Now you leave them off for a second. Leave it off for now. Um, Nate just gave you an enormous amount of events. A lot of information, didn't he? I mean, we had the entire bulletin was full. We actually, April had put in an insert because there's so much going on. I want to show you something really quick. Um, yeah, flip it, turn this on, and then go to next one. Right there, stop right there. All right, well, I'm sorry, go one more. Right there, stop right there. Uh-oh, there we go. So... This is my phone, okay? I've got it linked wirelessly. So <laughs> you can take... We have a church app, okay? Church app is the condensed version of our webpage. I'm going to scroll to it. Uh, one back. All right. You see right here, right in front of Austin's head, <laughs> not the Shazam, but the one next to it app, that's our church app. When you click that church app, You've got a condensed version of our website. All the sh points that you need. Um, talks about the church. Let me go to the side. There's actually a spot right there where you can read the Bible straight from the app. Um, you can actually, you can give. You can tithe on this app if you wanted to. Let me go down. There's the sermons. If you want to catch up on a missed sermon, live streaming. Here's the events. You see this event right here? Let me click on the events and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll, all right? There are all the events that Nate talked about. If I wanted to, um, let's see here, Pastor Appreciation. Yeah, let me click on that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> it tells you all about what's going to happen, what's going on. But then right there, you also can add it to your calendar. Bam, it's straight now added to my calendar. It's on my phone, so I can remember all of this stuff. And I can do that with anything. Um, we're extremely thankful and grateful. I'm going to embarrass April really quick. She does an, a great job of keeping this app updated, our Facebook updated, our church website updated. Take advantage of it. There's a lot going on right here that you can use just right at the fingertips. Um, I'm not going to go into a whole lot. News feed. Oh, let me tell you about this one. A prayer wall. Got a lot going on in our lives. You need prayer? I'm going to talk about that here in just a little bit. This is, I love this. This is awesome. You can go in, you can log in, and you can talk about your prayer request. And anybody using that app, guess what? Now you can go on and you can start praying for that person. And you can enter your prayer request or you can enter your praise. It's a whole other way. It's a whole other ministry it can be used as. Um, news feed, we, we haven't used that one. It's there. We're thinking about trying to figure that one out. Um, I was going to go to the, I'm not going to go through all of it. If you haven't looked, uh, used it, you're going to have to actually go to Tithely or ask myself, ask April. Um, we can send you the link that you can download and put the church app on your phone and make it a whole lot simpler if you do carry a phone. If you don't, well, that's why we got the bulletin. You can carry that bulletin all week long if you want. Just something else that can help us as we uh, move forward in the ministries that God has for us. My goodness, if you'd have told me five years ago that we would be having all the different ministries that we've got, this is something that God's led us through, leading us to. And we pray for the Holy Spirit's movement. We pray for the ministries. We pray for God to move in our lives. And this is stuff that He's doing. He's putting us in a place to impact shut-ins with a meal. Right? Toys to some kids in the Philippines or Philippians. Right? I mean, we've got so much going on. We're helping with uh, uh, feeding of the lambs with um, children in Springfield Elementary School that need uh, food for that evening's meal in, the, in that weekend. We've got a lot going on. We could use a lot more help. This is something that you can add to your phone that just help you with that. Um, keep that in your prayers. We need help. But let me tell you something, there's a reason for it. God's pushing this church. 
God's directing this church. I mean, I've talked about it for the last month or two about that guidance and that direction and you praying for the Holy Spirit. Well, we as a church should be doing the same thing, right? Praying for God to guide us and to direct us, not as an individual, but as the church. And guess what he's doing? A lot of outreach programs. There's a lot of people. We're just planting the seeds. A lot of people think, well, you know what, I, Donnie, I don't have the time to, 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 be, to knock, doors, knock on doors uh, and, 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 and explain salvation to this guy. And then once I say he accepts the salvation, the salvation, and then go and, and train him. Listen, all we need, all God wants is your obedience. And he just wants you to plant seeds. Let the Holy Spirit water those seeds. Right? We are in a position as a church to make a difference. And God's saying, I just need you to be obedient. I ain't even got to my notes and started a whole nother sermon. <laughs> Last week, I spoke about getting specific with God when you pray. Do you remember that? Some of us like, yeah, no, I can't remember. I slept the whole time. <laughs> Last week, I talked specifically about you getting specific with God in your prayers. Now, this morning, I want to talk about persistent prayer. I talked about last week's message, Get Specific with God. Today's title is Get Persistent with God. Let's open with a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, I do thank you for this moment. Thank you for you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy that we can come to a building, Lord. AC, we can be here, comfort. Lord, and we can just call out to you. We can praise you, Lord. We can worship you. We can give you honor. We can give you glory. Because that's what it's all about today. We're just here to celebrate you as our Father, Lord. I thank you so much that you love us that much. That we can do that for you. Lord, we do. As, as many different people, many different prayers this morning have already invited the Holy Spirit in. Well, I'm not going to be one that doesn't. I'm going to say let the Holy Spirit pour over this place, Lord. Over every individual. Lord, open our hearts and our eyes and our minds to what you'll have us hear, see, and feel. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, uh, there's a story that was told of a woman that lived in a remote part of England. A little farmhouse way off the beaten path. And she went to a great ordeal and a lot of expense to have electricity ran to her house. However, after a couple months, the electric company noticed that um, she wasn't using much, if any, electricity. Thinking there might be a problem with what they did or the installation process, they thought, well, you know what, we're going to go out to her house, we're going we're to send one of those meter readers, and we're going to try to figure out what's going on. So the meter reader went out to the little farmhouse. The man knocked on the door. And said, listen, you know, you know we've, we've, we've installed this electricity to your house. And, and we just checked the meter and everything looks to be okay. But it doesn't appear that you're using much, if any, electricity. Is, is there something wrong? And the lady said, oh, 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 no. No, no, it works great. We're, we're thrilled. We're satisfied. She said, we turn on the electricity every night to see how to light our lamps. And then we turn the electricity back off. Now, why didn't this woman make more use of her electricity? She believed in the electricity. She believed that the promises that the electric company gave her about the electricity, the power. She went to a great deal of trouble and expense to have her house wired for this electricity, for this power. But she didn't understand the potential of the electricity in her home. And so she used that power sparingly. There are Christians who use prayer very much the same way. We believe in prayer, don't we? We believe, yes, absolutely. We believe in prayer. We know the promises that God has given us and told us about in regards to prayer. We know about it. 
We've read stories. We've heard miracles about prayer. But still use the power of prayer sparingly. I believe the reason this happens, at least for some Christians, is that many don't understand how prayer works or the power, the power of prayer. And many Christians believe, right, it, it, it really doesn't really even matter whether I pray or not. Some Christians really do. They, I hear it quite frequently. They believe, listen, you know, God's going to do what God's going to do anyway. So why do I need to pray about it? Or they regard prayer as a last resort when all else has failed, and then that's when I need to go to God. And you know what? I'm in that category at times. Where I I've go to God as a last resort. It's very easy to get caught up in thinking when things arise, things pop up, and I can handle this, and I can handle this, and I can take care of this, and I can take care of this, and I can do this. Until you get frustrated. Until you go, God, I just can't, I can't take too much more of this. Lord, what do you want me to do? And very lovingly, God says, all right, now you're at the point, now you're willing to listen Let's do something about it. Let me intervene. It happens. But I want to tell you something this morning. We all need to understand. There is power in the people who pray. I'm going to say it again. There's power in the people who pray. Now notice I didn't say there's power in prayer. Well, there is power in prayer. Don't get me wrong. But what I said was, there's power in the people who pray. There's power in prayer. Absolutely. But look, if you don't practice it, if you're not putting that into practice, well, then where's the power at? So I asked the question, do you believe that prayer works? Do you believe that prayer works? Do you believe in the power of the people that pray? We do say we believe. We say we believe in the power of the people that pray. But there are times that our actions show something totally different. A long time ago, there was a small town. And in this town, an all-night nightclub opened up right next to the church. It ended up being a real rowdy bunch. It really started to impact the church. People started not coming to church because of the impact of the all-night nightclub right next to the church. So, so the church folks, they got together. And they said, you know what? We need to have an all-night prayer meeting. We've got to turn this over to God. We got to see what he wants us to do. We got to pray, and we got to pray, and we got to pray, and we got to pray. And when we're tired, we're going to pray some more. So they got together at one night, and they just started praying and praying and praying. And there was some of this prayer even turned into to God do something about this all night nightclub, this disturbance, this this hideous uh, creation that's right beside of our church. Lord, Lord, if it's your will, burn it down. Lord, burn it down. That night. A storm moved through the area. And the nightclub was struck by lightning and burned to the ground. The owner of the nightclub got wind of the all-night prayer meeting that was going on next door. And he sued the church. The church immediately denied responsibility. How could we do this? We can't control the lightning. We, you can't sue us. We, we had nothing to do with this. This was the lightning hit. How are you going to sue us? They both came before the judge. And the judge said this. He said, well, regardless of what the facts are, one thing is plainly clear. The nightclub owner believes in the power of prayer while the church does not. 
our actions tell all. It's very simple. It's very easy to say you believe in the power of prayer. But until you put it into action, it don't mean a lot. As Christians, prayer should consume every aspect of our lives. I talked about that last week. Not just as a last resort. Prayer should never be that Hail Mary pass in football. Where you, where you lean back. It's a last effort. I need something. I need to go all the way to the end zone. So I'm just going to throw it. And I'm hoping and I'm praying God's going to grab it. No. We need to realize that it impacts, that prayer impacts the decisions that you make every single day. We need to realize that it changes our lives. Prayer will change your lives as well as the people around you. And you need to realize that that prayer, that prayer line, that communication is a gift from God. That has the power to change the world. Not just your situation. Not just your town. Not just your church. Not just your county or your state. Not just your country. I said the world. We need to realize that prayer is the key to growing in your relationship with God Almighty. Turn with me to Daniel chapter 10. 1 through 14. If you didn't bring your Bibles today, you can always download an app. <laughs> See how I threw that in there real quick? Like, sneaky. Daniel chapter 10. I'm going to read verses 1 through 14. And I'm going to get into this. And I'm going to start reading. And I need you to bear with me because many of you are going to read and hear me read this. And you're going to go, what in the world does that got anything to do with what Donnie was talking about? Well, I'm going to. Show you. I'm going to tell you. Daniel chapter 10. I'm going to read verses 1 through 14. When you got it, say amen. amen. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a revelation was given to Daniel. It was also called Belteshazzar. Its message was true and it concerned a great war. The understanding of the message came to him in a vision. Now at that time, I, Daniel, mourned. For three weeks, I ate no choice food, no meat or wine touched my lips, and I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, uh, the Tigris, I looked up and there before me was a man dressed in linen with a belt of fine gold from Euphaz. Around his waist... His body was like topaz, his face like lightning, his eyes like a flaming torch, his arms and legs like the gleaming of um, burnished bronze, and his voice like the sound of a multitude. I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. Those who were with me did not see it, but such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. So I was left alone gazing at this great vision. I had no strength left in my face, turned deathly pale, and I was helpless. Then I heard him speak, and as I listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, consider carefully the words that I'm about to speak to you, and stand up, for I have now been sent to you. And when he had said this to me, I stood up. Trembling. Now let, me, let me pause right there. Just make sure you totally understand what, what's happening here. Daniel has been approached by an angel. Okay? Daniel was praying for three weeks. And now he's being approached by an angel. Let's keep reading. Not verse 12. Then he continued, the angel. Do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the very first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I have come in response to them. Let me pause here really quick. Daniel has prayed for about three weeks. And the angel says, your prayers is heard on day one. But here it is day three and we're here to help. 
Hold that thought. Let's keep reading. It says, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the very first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief, chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Let me give you a little insight before I keep going. That whole, uh, where are we at? God used the word we're heard and I've been trusting them. But the prince of Persian kingdom, that was not the prince of Persia, the country. That was satanic forces. Okay? And when you see it says, then Michael, one of the chief princes, that's Michael the archangel. Let me keep going. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Not the Persian king, demonic forces, possibly even Satan. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future for the vision concerns a time yet to come. That's a lot to take in. Most of us here have heard the, the, the Bible stories about Daniel. Daniel prayed three times a day, no matter what. Didn't matter where he was at, he was going to pray three times a day. He prayed in his room. He prayed in a lion's den. Y'all remember that story? He prayed for wisdom. He prayed for guidance. He prayed that God would forgive the sins of his people, the Israelites. He wanted them to return back home to Jerusalem. And now we find Daniel struggling in prayer for 21 days because he's troubled by a dream that he's had. Daniel is praying three times a day, 21 days straight. Think about this. When was the last time that you prayed three times a day for the same thing for 21 days straight? Let me add something to that really quick. Think back to the last time that you prayed three times a day for 21 days straight about one specific issue. And that issue, that problem was not related to you. I just took that to a whole nother level. When's the last time you've prayed 21 days, three times a day for 21 days, and the issue that you're praying about, that you're concerned about, didn't have anything to do with you. Most Christians have trouble with this. You know, at times, even me saying this, you know, processing this can be tough. But God wants us to understand the power of the people that pray and how that can remove, or excuse me, and the remarkable things that come from it. That's why prayer without ceasing is so important. We should pray and pray and pray and pray and not give up. Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. Now, when I was younger, I used to think, well, that pray without ceasing meant I just say the exact same prayer over and over and over and over again. No, you're praying about that issue, whatever it is, but you don't stop praying. We should be like little children in a grocery store. Anybody that's a parent, you know what I'm talking about. Man, them kids will not stop begging for that stuff, will they? Austin's he's all right now. Every once in a while, he'll get a little crazy. <laughs> nah. When you're a kid, you remember when you was a parent and the kids just, Hey, can I get this? And can I get that? And can I get this? You remember that? Paul Harvey told a story one time of a three-year-old boy who went to the grocery store with his mother. Before they entered the grocery store, the mother took to, looked at the son. She said, now listen to me. I'm going to tell you something straight up. I know you've been wanting them chocolate chip cookies, but we're going in here. We're going to get what we need. I got a list. We're going to stick to the list. And then we're getting out. And chocolate chip cookies ain't on that list. Don't even ask. So she put him in the cart. And they went into the store. He's sitting there in that little basket right in front of the cart. You know what I'm talking about. 
And he was doing just fine. Didn't open his mouth, didn't do nothing, didn't say anything until they got to the cookie section. He saw the chocolate chip cookies, you know, that whole section. He saw the chocolate chip cookies. He stood up in the seat and he said, Mom, can I have some chocolate chip cookies? She said, I told you. I told you. Don't even ask. We ain't getting chocolate chip cookies. Sit back down and be quiet. He did. And they continued through the aisles, up one and down the other. He was doing all right until he, the mom realized she'd forgot something and had to backtrack. She got up the aisle and down the aisle. And before you know it, they're right there in front of the cookies again. He stood up on the seat. Mom, can I get some chocolate chip cookies? She said, no, you can't have chocolate chip cookies. I told you. We're not getting chocolate chip cookies. We're sticking to the list. Now sit down and be quiet. Finally, they were done shopping. Getting ready to check out. And you know how it is. You're in that line. People in front of you, you're getting ready to start putting all your food up on the counter. And the little boy realized this was his last chance. This is it. It's all or nothing right here. He stood up and he shouted, in the name of Jesus, can I get some chocolate chip cookies? Everybody around him, that whole front of the grocery store just bust out laughing. People started to applaud. And due to the generosity of everybody else besides the mama, he walked out with 23 boxes of chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> we laugh, we can have a good time. Listen, diligently, persistently praying. We pray and do not give up. You say, why? Why do we need to do that, Donnie? Is, is God hard of hearing? Right? Do, do we just need to... It takes numerous times to get His attention. Do, do we just have to keep bothering Him uh, until He throws His hands up and says, fine, fine, they're not going to be quiet until I, get, I do this. No. No, not at all. In fact, our text this morning... Tells us something totally different. Something you may have overlooked. May, something you may have never even noticed. Take a look at Daniel 10, 10 again. It says, Since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard. And I, this is the angel saying this to Daniel, and I have come in response to, to the prayer. How many days was it later before the angel showed up? Three weeks. The beginning of the scripture tells us 24 days. The angel is telling Daniel that his prayers were heard the very first time he prayed. And that's not the first time this has ever happened with Daniel. Flip back one chapter if you're still there. Daniel 9.23 says this, As soon as you began to pray, an answer was given, which I have come to tell you, for you are highly esteemed. Therefore, consider the message and understand the vision. Another time, an angel said, the first time you prayed, it was heard. In other words, in other words, every time that you and I pray, not only does God gladly, glad, excuse me, gladly hear our prayers, an angel is immediately sent from the throne of God to assist in your prayers. What? The Holy Spirit on top of that is interceding in your prayers. You say, well, Donnie, yeah, but that still doesn't answer the question. Why should we always pray and not give up? The story of Daniel here in chapter 10 gives us at least one reason why we should never give up. Let me reread you. And I didn't close my Bible. Let me find it again. Let me read you verses 12 through 13. If you're there in 10, 
flip back to Daniel 10, 12 through 13. Let me read this to you. He says this in verse 12. Then he continued, this is the angel speaking here. Then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel, since the very first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard. And I have come in response to them. Let's keep going. But the prince of Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Do you remember who I told you the Persian kingdom was? Demonic forces. Then Michael, talking about Michael the archangel, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. Because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Again, not the country ruler. Consider this. From the very first day that Daniel prayed his prayer, they were heard and an angel was dispatched to assist him. But this is one of the rare times in history. One of the rare times, really, in all of God's Word, where God pulls back that curtain... And let's us see that spiritual realm that's going on. See, me and you, we live in the physical realm. We usually make a lot of decisions based off of what we think and what we can see. All the time, we know that there is a spiritual war, spiritual realm that's waging all around us. But we don't see that. This is one of the rare times where where God reached over and he grabbed that curtain and he pulled it back just a little bit so he could see. So Daniel could see that spiritual realm and what was going on. When Daniel prayed, when you and I pray, demonic forces rose up. Talking about that prince of Persia, and an angelic warfare broke out. You know what that means? Demonic forces was trying to hinder Daniel's prayer. That means when you pray, you turn loose the very powers of heaven. That means when you pray, you have got the power to battle the very forces of darkness. That means when you pray, angels are willing to fight and assist in your prayers. Hebrews 1.14 tells us angels are ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. When you pray, angels are at your beck and call. And that raises a very interesting question. Well, Daniel prayed on 21. He prayed, excuse me, on day 1, but the angel came on day 21. The angel was sent on day one when he started praying, but he didn't show up until day 21. So here's the question. What have happened had Daniel give up on his prayers? Huh. See, too many times we think, well, I'm going to pray. So after day one, then we go, well, God didn't want to answer my prayer. I'm going to just keep on going. Got a prayer concern, God, and you pray for two days, three days. Well, I guess God didn't want to answer the prayer. What happened? What would have happened if Daniel didn't continue to pray for those 21 days? I mean, what if, what if Daniel would have given up on day 14? Two weeks. God had been praying for two weeks. Been praying, God, two weeks and nothing. What would have happened if he gave up on day 14? What about day 15? 16? Maybe 17? What if he made it to day 17? Would the angel have arrived with his answer? You know, the Bible doesn't tell us, but the implication is, maybe not. There's a reason why the Lord God teaches and tells us to pray without ceasing. You don't know everything that's behind it. You don't know everything in that spiritual realm. You don't know what's going on. 
A lot of times we get caught up in thinking, well, I'm going to pray and I'm going to pray and I'm going to pray until God does something. And after day two, we say, well, guess he didn't want to pray or excuse me, didn't want to answer the prayer. See, God answers prayer. He will always answer your prayer, always. But he usually answers them with a yes, a no, or a wait. And a lot of times after day two or three or four, and we're thinking God's just not going to answer that prayer. Maybe that waiting period that you're in is because God's not working just on you, but there's a spiritual realm that's happening at the same time. That's why prayer without ceasing is a must. Jesus taught that we should always pray. Do not give up. Not because God's hard of hearing. Not because God needs to be pestered into answering your requests. Not because God doesn't want to answer you. No. Jesus taught us always to pray. Do not give up because when we pray, hear me out. When we pray, our prayers carry weight. Every time that you and I pray, Think about this. We unleash more and more and more power from the throne of God. When you pray, you release power from the throne of God. Are you praying for someone in your family to come to Christ? Every prayer you pray puts more and more pressure on that person to listen to God. Do you pray for your friends in their daily struggles? Every prayer you pray imparts on them more and more power from God. Are you praying for someone in your family to be healed? The more prayer, prayer that you pray relinquishes more power and more power on the healing in that person. Jesus taught, don't give up. Pray without ceasing. Every prayer that you lift up to God brings power to situations wherever you're at, whatever's going on. Prayer's not passive. It's an act on our part. It comes from us. The power comes from us praying. Prayer's aggressive. It's a ministry. You ever thought about that? Prayer is an active ministry. You're putting your shoulder to the wheel and you're moving the forces of heaven when you pray. Do you realize that? That's why praying all the times, not just when there's adversity. You pray all the time. When something rises up in your life, you don't just pray for it once or twice and then give up thinking God's got other stuff to do. Pray your prayers again and again and again and again. Why? Because there's supernatural power in prayer. You're unleashing the powers of heaven when you pray. You're overcoming that spiritual battle that's taking place all around you, whether you see it or not. You pray and you do not give up. As we come to a close, prayer is extremely important. It's extremely powerful, but let me tell you something that's only effective if you as a Christian apply it. Don't let it be your last resort. Don't let it be your Hail Mary pass. Understand it's absolutely crucial to your spiritual growth and has the power to change not only your life, but the lives around you. So I urge you, challenge you, Get persistent with your prayers. Let's close in prayer. Lord, we thank you so much that you have given us a blessing. You have blessed us with a line of communication to talk straight to God. Lord, and I pray, I pray that each and every person here understands the amount of power that they have when they pray. And that we just don't pray once or twice. We don't give up. But Lord, we pray with persistence. And we pray and we pray and we pray and we pray. No matter what's going on, Lord. I thank you for that. I thank you loved us so much. That you gave your son for us. And then you gave us a way to communicate with him. In Jesus' name. Amen. As we close in prayer. I'm going to close with a closing song. The song says, the world starts changing. 
when the church starts praying. We live in a society, a world where that's the Burger King or the, the McDonald's mentality where we want it and we want it now. Right? We just want to go through the drive through get it and go. And a lot of times that's how our prayer life works. You know, we become so accustomed to getting things so quick. We got internet, and we can find out whatever we need, right? Whatever we got to have, we can find it quick. I can have it, you know, Amazon Prime. I can usually get to the house the next day or two. Prayers don't work like that. A lot of times God's working on you through your prayer. You ever thought about that? You're praying and God's saying, I'm making you stronger. I need you to continue to pray. I need you to pray and pray and pray and pray. And when you get tired, you know what I need you to do? I need you to pray some more. It's part of that relationship building. Don't stop when you can't get your hamburger fast. Right? When that prayer don't come like that. You just buckle down and you pray harder. It's not only going to help with the answer of prayer, but it's going to help with you growing in that relationship with Christ. That's what it's all about. Jay, you mind to close us in prayer?